All right, today we're going to talk about ISO. I'm trying to figure out for the model, should I use Baymax or this alligator head? Hello and welcome to this PhotographyTV.com video. I'm Paul Fontanelli and today we're going to talk about ISO. And ISO is one of the three components of the exposure triangle. And the exposure triangle is made up of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Now, if you're not familiar with shutter speed or aperture, check out these other videos to fully explore those. Now, for ISO, let's talk about the definition of really what ISO is. And so in the digital world, your digital camera has a sensor. And so what ISO represents is that sensor's sensitivity to light, meaning how much light is it able to absorb based on the image. And so we will explain this really in two primary pieces. And so the first thing that we're going to explore is how your ISO controls the amount of light that your, sub, that your camera is able to capture. So we'll give you some examples of that. Essentially, the higher the ISO, the more light that your camera is able to capture, the sensor is able to capture and be sensitive to. So higher ISO, more light. But the second thing is that that ISO comes at a cost. And so the thing, second thing we're going to look at with ISO is the impact to the quality of your image. Simply put, the lower your ISO, the higher the quality. Because ISO, the higher it goes, starts to introduce something that's called noise. And so I joked earlier about the models, but I'm actually going to bring Baymax. I decided to go with Baymax for the model. So we're going to bring Baymax in and we're going to show you those two things. We're going to show you the sensitivity to light and how that increases when you increase your ISO. And then second, we'll show you how the quality can be impacted um, with your ISO. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do a little magic trick here. I'm going to bring a table and Baymax in right now. All right, there we go. Table's here, Baymax is here, he's set up. We're gonna use them to show how ISO impacts your pictures. So first, we're gonna actually start off with a shot that makes Baymax dark. So we're actually gonna put the aperture, the shutter speed, those two elements of the exposure triangle, we're gonna set them and the ISO first so that you can see that he's too dark. So if you're ever faced with this subject uh, or this situation, let's say you Take a picture and you want your aperture, you want your shutter speed to stay the same for whatever reason, but the, the subject's just too dark. I'm gonna show you how ratcheting up your ISO will allow more light, which is that first step. Higher ISO equals more light. So let's go ahead and get started with that example. All right, so you're gonna see I've got everything set. I've got the aperture at F4 and I've got the shutter speed at 1 800th. With really, it, for purposes of this video, those those settings don't really matter, they're kind of arbitrary, but let's just assume you needed to keep those the same. Watch what happens. Right now, ISO is at 100, which is typically the, the lowest end of ISO on most standard cameras. And you can see Baymax is way too dark. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna increase only the ISO, I'm gonna keep shutter speed and aperture the exact same. So those elements of the exposure triangle are not moving. I'm gonna increase ISO and show you how it increases the brightness of the photograph. So let's go to ISO 400. I'm gonna go from 100 to 400, really bump this up and show you how now things get brighter. All right, so there you go. I increased ISO from 100 to 400 and the picture got brighter, but it's still not quite bright enough. All right, so now I'm just gonna bump it up one more from 400 to 800. So what's one more level up? And so there I'm gonna get it at ISO 800. Shutter speed and aperture are still the exact same. Watch what happens now. So there you go. Now you can see he's the right amount of brightness. So that changed no other setting other than ISO. In these three examples, I went from ISO 100 to 400 to 800, and you can see by increasing that ISO, it increased the brightness of the photograph. All right, so there you go. That was the first thing to know about ISO, is that just by increasing the ISO, you can increase the brightness of the photograph. So if you need to keep aperture and shutter speed the same, but you need to brighten up the photograph, then you would increase ISO, and the opposite is true. If it's too bright, 
you can decrease the ISO as much as possible to decrease the brightness as well. So it's the first thing to understand about ISO and really the most important thing is that controls the sensitivity and the amount of light that the photograph can capture. So now let's cover the second thing we want to talk about with ISO, which is how ISO impacts the quality of your image. Because one, it's important to understand how it affects light, but second, you gotta understand how it affects the quality so that you don't go too far on the ISO and hurt your quality. So now what we're gonna do for the next experiment is we're gonna keep Baymax here. We're actually gonna set the camera so that over time we have to continuously increase the ISO and I'm gonna show you how it goes from a very clean image to what's called a noisy image at a very high ISO and it kinda of brings down the quality of the image. So I'm gonna do that just by changing the shutter speed. Again, this isn't a lesson about shutter speed but as I increase the shutter speed, it drops the amount of light that's coming into the sensor, therefore I have to increase my ISO. Again, point of this is to show you the ISO, but just know for each photograph, I'm gonna keep increasing the ISO, and I'm gonna show you a rotation of these images, and at the end, we'll be able to compare the quality of the image. All right, so as we take these shots, I'm gonna zoom in two to one, really zoom in on Baymax's face so you can see the image quality go down as the ISO increases. And here you go as we roll through them. All right, so there you go. Here are the two big extremes. Here's ISO 100 and here's ISO 12,800. And you can see the clear difference between the two in the quality of the image. The ISO 100 is what we call clean and the ISO 12,800 is really noisy with all those different spots right there on Baymax's face. Now, this camera I was using, the Nikon D3300, can only go up to ISO 12,800. Newer cameras, higher end quality cameras can go significantly higher. And that's okay. Um, the amount of ISO that you want to be able to go to will vary upon the camera. And it also varies with what you're comfortable with. There'll be times that you have to push the ISO higher and you have to sacrifice that quality because it's the only way to get the right amount of light. So you're going to have to find that balance. And over time, what we found is camera companies continue to improve the quality of the uh, noise or the, the quality reduction of the noise as the ISO increases. So over time, that amount of ISO that you can push it to will continue to go up. Right now, I probably try not to go above ISO 3200 unless I absolutely have to. That's kind of where my comfort level is because above that, I'm not as comfortable with the amount of noise that comes in. Below that, I'm pretty comfortable with it. And honestly, anything at ISO 100, 200, 400, even 800, I shoot within that ISO range, 1 to 800, very comfortably without even thinking about it. 1600, 3200 are things that I'll go to when I need to, and I try not to go above 3200 because as you saw in that Baymax example, it can really deteriorate the quality as you get higher up on the ISO. So that is ISO, the two most important pieces. The higher the ISO, the more light that it get, captures on your sensor, and then the higher you go at the ISO, the lower the quality is gonna be. So there is that trade-off of how much light you need, but how much quality you're willing to sacrifice in the image. So thanks for watching this video on photographytv.com. I encourage, ISO is your camera's sensors, sense of, dang, that doesn't make sense. You use Baymax or this cool alligator head. Rawr. That was dumb. Right now. Uh-uh. Right now. That didn't work. Now I gotta figure out how to get down from this. Oh, this is not stable. Ugh.